Hello, this is Dr. Millette. As a new patient at Millette Family Chiropractic, we require that you attend or listen to a chiropractic new patient orientation. We feel the patients that attend get well faster and make better decisions about their care. This is best received with your spouse or a friend. You'll find a questionnaire in your folder that can be completed after the orientation. As a principled office, we are always looking to help our community. At the bottom of the form, you have an opportunity to help your family and friends by giving the gift of health, giving them a complimentary spinal screening. This is worth $75. Please bring the completed form to the office when you're finished and enjoy Dr. Joseph Strauss, a world-renowned author and chiropractor in his patient education lecture. Start off this talk by saying, what do we chiropractors cure? And I think now's as good time as any to tell you exactly what a chiropractor cures. No chiropractor anywhere ever cured anybody of anything. Let me repeat that. No, no, let me go one step further. No doctor anywhere ever cured anybody of anything. Let's understand what healing or curing is. Healing or curing very simply is the creation of new living tissue. You cut your finger, you destroy a billion cells. Simple little cut will destroy a billion cells and your body will create new cells to heal that cut. When all those new cells have been created, that cut finger is healed. If you have a sore throat, it's because there's billions of cells in there that are sick and dying and dead. When all those sick and dying cells die off and are replaced by new healthy ones, your sore throat is healed. So healing takes place by one means only, the creation of new living tissue. Therefore, for anybody to be able to heal, he'd have to be able to create living tissue. And all the scientists, all the medical doctors, all the osteopaths, all the surgeons, and all the chiropractors in the world can't even create a blade of grass, let alone living human tissue. Only the body can do that. So only this living body heals itself. You know, in fact, even the body can't heal a sick cell. But fortunately, you could just replace it with a new one. In fact, your body's replacing new cells all the time. Did you ever see that milk commercial used to be on a few years back? They used to sing, there's a new you coming every day. And they used to say that your body was making 8 billion new cells every minute. 8 billion new cells every minute. Simply because the old ones wear out, die off, and are replaced. The cells of your skin last only a few weeks. And they die, and either fall off, or they come off when you wash. That's why the beautiful tan you're going to spend all summer getting is going to be gone by the second week in October. The cells, your internal organs, the cells making up your internal organs, they last about four to six months. Four to six months from now, you're going to have a new stomach, new kidney, a new gallbladder, providing you still got all the old ones, you will. The cells, the red blood cells in your body, there's enough red blood cells in your body. Do you know this? That if you stack them one on top of another, like little coins from the floor here, that stack would reach halfway to the moon. That's how many red blood cells are in each of your bodies. And every single one of those cells is going to be dead in 120 days. But don't worry about it, your body's going to make new ones. The cells making up your bones, they last about the longest. They live about seven years. And then they die and are replaced. So that every seven years, every cell in your body is replaced at least once. Which means every seven years you have a completely new body. I said that to a group once and some guy looked over his wife and said, Well, if she's got a new body every seven years, how come it still always looks like the old one? Well, there's a reason for that. Because the cells concerned with running the whole show, those aren't replaced. The cells in the nervous system, up here in the brain and down through that spinal cord, those aren't replaced. Those you have from the time you're born to the time you die. So you can see the importance of that nervous system and keeping it healthy. But anyway, getting back to healing, healing then takes place by the body healing itself. And if anybody were able to heal you, he'd have to be able to create living tissue. And no doctor anywhere can do that. Only this living body heals up. And the body needs no help in healing itself. Good grief. I'm not so vain as to believe that I help the body. The human body's been healing itself long before Joe Strauss came on the scene. And it's probably going to be doing it long after I'm gone. This living body heals itself and needs no help from anybody. Not from any medical doctor, not from any surgeon, and no help from any chiropractor. The body heals itself and needs no help from anybody. Just no interference. Our job is not to help the body or to heal the body, but simply to remove the interference to enable the body to heal itself. There's someone out there saying, yeah, but wait a minute, I know if I, if I cut my finger, I pull iodine on it, wrap it in bandage, go to the MD, get a shot of penicillin here, a shot of tetanus here, that cut finger heals. Now, sure, those things must help. Even just a little bit? Well, if you believe that, I want you to do an experiment for me. Go down to the local supermarket and buy a piece of steak. Although the price of steak these days, you probably won't want to do this one. But bring the steak home and cut it. 
just a small cut on that steak, pour the iodine on the steak, wrap it in bandage, take it to a local MD, and get him to give it a shot of penicillin and a shot of tetanus. More than like he'll give you a shot of some strong tranquilizer and have you cart off to some institution. But bring the steak home and set it in the corner for a few days and see if it heals. And if the cut on that steak will heal, even just a little bit, then I believe that penicillin and iodine and bandages heal. You say, now come on, that's absurd. The steak's not going to heal. It's a dead piece of meat. And that's just the point. That which is alive heals itself. That which is dead does not heal itself. That which is 100% alive heals itself 100%. That which is only 99.9% .9 alive because 100% is being cut off right there or being decreased right there due to that bone out of place is only going to heal itself 99.9%. .9%. Obviously, what we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, is that it's the life within your body that does the healing, not the doctor. Well, what's life? Well, that's a question that stumped the philosophers for years. Mark Twain had an answer. He said life was one darn thing after another. All right, we know that life's a, a magazine and a breakfast cereal. And I'm not really sure what life is, but I do know that there's some power, there's some force, there's some energy flowing through your body and mine which separates us from a corpse lying in the morgue down the road. Those corpses have the same organs, same tissue, same cells, same blood, same nervous system as all of you. In fact, some of those corpses may have more organs than a few of you. But you cut the finger on one of those corpses and it won't heal. Cut your finger and it will. Put food into your body and your body will change into flesh and blood. Put food into a corpse, it will lie there and rot. There's some power, there's some energy, there's some force flowing through this body that does the healing. The job of a chiropractor is not to heal or to cure anybody of anything, but to simply open up the channels to allow that power to flow. All right, the next logical question then is, what conditions can the body heal itself of? And the answer to that very simply is anything and everything. There's no disease known to man that this body cannot and has not cured itself of. You say, oh, here it comes. Now the chiropractor is going to claim he cures everything from the common cold to cancer. Well, as I said before, we chiropractors don't cure anything, but this living body can cure itself of everything from the common cold to cancer. Here's a condition that everybody's had, the common cold, right? And everybody knows there's no cure for the common cold, right? Okay, who cured your last cold? They say, oh, nobody cured it. I gave it to my husband. Well, maybe your husband got it, but your body cured itself. You do nothing for it and it goes away, right? It might take two days, it might take two weeks, but eventually it goes away because this living body cures itself of the common cold. And the body can cure itself even of cancer. I heard a debate between an MD and a chiropractor about, about 15 years ago. And the MD says, name me a person who got well under chiropractic care from cancer. And so the chiropractor, because he was asked, told his case history. I won't go into all the details. But when he was all done, documenting it and everything, the MD says, well, that doesn't prove that chiropractic cured him. He said, every year we have thousands of people get well from cancer. They don't go to MDs, don't go to surgeons, and they definitely don't go to chiropractors. He said, they just get well. So we in medicine call that a spontaneous remission. So how do you claim that chiropractic cured this one case? And that's just the point. We don't claim that chiropractic cured that one case or cured any case. What we claim is that the body cures itself. Listen to the words of this MD. Thousands of people get well every year from cancer because their body cures itself. All we say is that a body with a good nerve supply can work a whole ba lot better than one with a poor nerve supply. <coughs> Maybe the difference between this man's body healing itself of cancer and not healing itself was the fact that he had the nerve interference removed. Or maybe he would have gotten well anyhow. I don't know. But a body with a good nerve supply has to work better than one with a poor nerve supply. A body free of vertebral subluxation has to work better than one with vertebral subluxation. And it really doesn't matter whether you got the common cold, cancer, anything in between, or nothing at all. A body with a good nerve supply has to work better than one with a poor nerve supply. Now, does that mean that everybody who goes to a chiropractor is going to get well? No, unfortunately they don't. In fact, some of you people sitting in the room right now may not get well under chiropractic care. And if you don't, it's because of one or two reasons. We call these reasons limitations. Not limitations upon chiropractic, because it's not a chiropractor's job to get you well. It's your body's job to get itself well. So these are limitations upon the body, and they're both very simple and logical. The first is what we call limitations of time. It takes a certain amount of time for the body to heal itself. Maybe a day, a week, a month, a year, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. If a person should walk into this office with a condition that they've had for 40 years and they're 80 years old, it may take their body another 40 years to heal itself. If they're 80 years old, they may not be around for another 40 years. That doesn't mean their body can't. It means it just didn't have sufficient time. That's a limitation of time. You have to realize when we're talking about time, when we're talking about healing, we're talking about the creation of new tissue, and that takes time. It takes nine months to make one of these bodies. Right, ladies? 
And you can't rush that process as much as you would like to have done it. It takes nine months to make one, and it takes a certain amount of time for it to heal. Because it's essentially the same process. doesn't matter whether you're making a new body or healing a damaged or diseased one. The creation of living tissue, healing, takes time. Limitations of time. Second factor, and what I believe the most important, is what we call limitations of matter, or limitations of the material with which your body has to work. Cut your finger and it's going to heal, right? Cut your finger off and your body's not going to grow a new finger simply because the human body doesn't have the material with which to grow new fingers. That's a limitation of matter. Okay, because of these two factors, time and matter, there is a point in every person's body, no matter what their condition, no matter what their disease, there is a point where if so much damage has been done, that body might not be able to heal itself. And if a person's past the point that their body can no longer heal itself, maybe they need medicine, maybe they need surgery, or maybe they're just going to have to learn to live with that condition. You know, I'm not against medicine and surgery. Some people get the impression from hearing us talk or reading the literature or seeing the signs in the office that we feel there's no place for medical doctors. And that's not so. If a person's body's past the point that it can no longer heal itself, let's try medicine or let's try surgery. Recognize, though, that the medicine or surgery is not going to cure you because if this living body can't cure itself, nobody can. The medicine or surgery is merely going to relieve the symptoms, ease your suffering, prolong your life or prolong your death, whichever way you want to look at it, or in the case of surgery, cut out an organ or a part that's so diseased it's never going to work right again. But those things don't cure you. In fact, surgery, by its very procedure, makes you permanently sick. Did you ever think about that? By removing an organ or a part of your body that was meant to be there, you never have a hope in the world of ever being 100% healthy again. Oh, you may feel relatively good for the rest of your life, but you're never going to be 100% healthy. Well, hey, how can you be 100% healthy if you don't have 100% of your parts? You can't. But if a person's body is past the point that it can no longer heal itself, I'm all in favor of medicine and surgery. Unfortunately, we have no idea where that point is in any individual, determined by a number of factors. How long you've had the condition, which we don't know. We may know how long you had the symptoms. Oh, yeah, doc, I remember this condition began September the 24th, 1972. Uh-uh. The symptoms may have begun September the 24th, 1972. The condition may have been developing 10 years before that. We don't know how long the vertebral subluxation has been present. That might have been 10 years before the condition was developing, which was 10 years before the first symptom appeared. We don't know how much damage is done unless we cut you open and look at you, and that would do more harm than good. And we don't know if there's any damage done to the nerves. In this particular example here, if this bone's been out of place for 15 or 20 years, it may have permanently damaged that nerve cut off the nerve supply to this area of the stomach. Consequently, even though we put the bone back into place, that nerve is never again going to carry the energy back to that area of the stomach because the nerve's been permanently damaged. And that person might have to take some medication to relieve the symptoms in their stomach or ultimately have that part of their body removed. All, right. All these factors determine whether a person's body can heal itself and none of them we know. That's why in this office we accept every patient no matter what their condition, no matter what their disease, we accept every patient not to get anybody well. Because frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we don't get anybody well in here. But to remove the vertebral subluxation, to correct the vertebral subluxation so the body can heal itself. If they can get well, fine. If they can't, well, we've done all that we can do. And we tell patients, as I'll tell you folks, if you don't get well, don't blame me. Because it's not my job to get you well. It's my job to remove the nerve interference. It's your body's job to get itself well. If you don't get well, blame your body. By the same token, we tell patients, when you do get well, don't give us the credit. Even though I'd like to take it, it's not mine. I don't deserve it. Give the credit to your body. Only this living body heals itself. Only the power that makes that body, that creates that living tissue, is truly capable of healing it. The job of a chiropractor is merely open up the channels to allow that power to flow. I hope you enjoyed Dr. Strauss. Now is the time to complete the questionnaire and bring it back to the office. It is an honor to serve you, and I look forward to your progress in the office. See you soon. Thank you.